Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Alpha 3.0 is the focus and hot topic at the moment, but its scope and features have changed drastically over the last year. Today I wanted to talk about what we're actually getting in 3.0 and kind of what changed about it originally. Changes in content. So originally 3.0 was talked about at Gamescom 2016. They planned that 3.0 would include the full Stanton system, at least roughly mapped out with planets, moons and points of interest. From that original plan, we have a smaller play area to what the we're actually planning to release. In the Stanton system, we only really have one quarter of that whole system, the area around Crusader. Really, in regards to play area, it's an entire remake of what we had in 2.0 with additional points of interest, planetary landing tech, and um, for like these huge explorable moons, but also a huge host of new other parts to the machine now. There's lots and lots of new features and there's lots of improvements that they probably didn't intend even at the time. So why have they remade 2.0's play area? 2.0 showcased what the idea of the Persistent Universe was, but it was a relatively small sandbox to get feedback, test and showcase plans for the Persistent Universe of the future. A lot of the underlying tech had not been completed at that stage. Planetary tech and tools allowed CIG to have fully explorable planets, basically adding 50% more potential gameplay to their game and, and to the verse in general. 2.0 just didn't have the setup for that. Object container streaming. This allows for sections of the play areas to be intelligently cut up into containers and then objects, items, NPCs and assets, ships, all of that sort of jazz to be streamed on the fly into those areas. It's an evolution of the mega map, but it, object container streaming will allow seamlessness within game and smart performance. So traveling from space to ground and back again and participating in massive combined arms combat in capital ships all without loading screens and at a high level of detail and performance frame rate rise. Object containers can be um, within another object container and capital ships or planets might be cut up into multiple object containers, all of which will communicate with each other and can just stream into their particular object container and communicate with each other without them interacting if they don't need to, that sort of stuff. So it's, it's just smart and intelligent and performance optimizing. For 3.0, the setup for object containers is that. Though, the performance improvements that will be attached to that are coming in the future. It's the setup for all those object containers, but not the full object container system. Um, but we're going to get these in proximate patches. We're going to get them as relatively close to each other. They are important, and that's what they're building towards. 3.0 now, however, represents the true backbone or skeleton of the game. Everything that can be built upon these systems that are now going to be in place with 3.0. The blocks and pieces of 2.0 haven't been wasted. There's a large amount that have become parts of other systems, points of interest like stations and satellites will be using a modulus um, building set, art and assets are all going to be reused, missions have procedural and modular parts to them um, and the ones we already have can be put into that. Art, assets, shops, items, ships, the mechanics, all of the base mechanics, they're all going to still be used and then improved upon with 3.0. As there have been so many changes, features and improvements, I thought we should go through an updated feature set of what's coming out with 3.0. The Delta Patcher is probably one of the more exciting things, oddly. Um, it will allow incremental downloads of updates. Uh, rather than 30 gig downloads, we're going to see just maybe hundreds of megs per update. With the Delta Patcher, we can expect a change in the way CIG gives us game updates and patches. We we should see much more rapid progress when it comes to hotfixes, ships coming out, um, game zones, mechanics, uh, balance, all that sort of stuff can be released much quicker. Um, with 3.0 being the foundation of everything else as well, they can build upon that pretty rapidly. Planetary landing tech is a major part of Alpha 3.0, allowing us to travel from space to moons, so Daymar, Selin, Yella, uh, as well as the mining planetoid Delamar. Each of these will have its own weather biomes, atmosphere, landscape, and have been vastly improved since the origins of the planetary um, procedural tech they've been using. It's not procedural tech really anymore. Everything is artist crafted. It's procedurally assisted. Um, so the original planets were just like plopped in. They go, right, we've got, we know exactly what biomes and everything we want on this planet. And then we'll generate a planet based on that. They tell it all the parameters and then they get in there with an artist's scalpel and make cool things happen. And then they can move stuff around to wherever they want, drop in wrecks if they want to, or just let the systems handle the large areas. It's kind of up to them. Delamar uh, is going to be a fully fleshed out hero landing zone akin to Arc Corpse Area 18, but with a lot more function um, 
and it's actually going to be part of the persistent universe. There's going to be shops there, there's going to be missions there, there's going to be a lot to do there. These moons will be fully explorable with outposts, wrecks, derelicts, points of interest to find, and integration with missions and other players. Throughout the last year, though, the procedural tech and tools for crafting these planets and all of these outposts and everything, these wrecks, have been getting better and better, and the fidelity of the game in general has just been improving. There's also now going to be racetracks on planets in 3.0 as well, uh, for players to zoom around in their ground vehicles. Cargo and trade is another major feature. We're going to be able to purchase cargo and commodities and then sell it if our ships have a cargo bay from kiosks around the uh, Crusader area, or the Stanton system. Uh, the cargo will be represented in our cargo bays using a grid system to stack it and work out the volumes. We can also loosely pick up crates that we found while exploring or looting ships that have been destroyed as their cargo basically explodes out of them if they were a cargo ship or player or whatever and um, when we destroy their ship the cargo will go psh, out of them but we can move crates around we can pick them up and we can put them down and that will take up particular amounts of space in our cargo bays and we can be able to stack stuff in there more appropriately there is a dynamic economy as well element to this the ship equipment and weapons are going to be available to purchase in game as well as a whole host of new fps equipment materials and commodities commodities that you buy and sell will have prices based on their demand and value and this is all going to be worked out using their tools they call Trade Slayer and Price Fixer. Um, though this is very early implementation of a dynamic economy, it still has some dynamics to it. You can store vehicles like the Dragonfly, Urza Rover, Nox and Greycat, basically the smaller ones, in cargo bays with enough room. They're treated like cargo and take up space that would be otherwise used for cargo, so you can lock them down there safely. If you try and just park a, a vehicle in another one and don't lock it down or don't put it in a cargo bay properly, they're weird things might occur, they could be damaged, they could, they could explode when you go to quantum travel, whatever. The plan is also there to have the Constellation P-52 snubcraft to docking and undocking ability in there too, which would allow the P-52 to literally be able to undock from its constellation, uh, parent ship, and fly around and shoot stuff and then redock there. We'll have to wait and see exactly how that's going to work and if they get that in there, because I assume that is quite difficult to do. Persistence. So persistence is now actually a thing in Alpha 3.0. Log out and you and your ship will be there when you log back in where you left it. Cargo items and anything else in your cargo, um, even stolen vehicles, will persist. So possession of any stolen vehicle will also persist. However, stolen vehicles could get you in trouble with security. Um, they say a kill on site order could be issued if they see you flying around a stolen ship. Landing at most landing zones would return a stolen vehicle or ship back to its owner. Lose a stolen uh, vehicle or ship, you can't get it back without basically stealing another one. Insurance, though, is going to be much more fleshed out. You can make a claim um, to get a new ship, whether it's been damaged, destroyed, lost, or stolen. You'll then wait a certain amount of time or pay a deductible to expedite the return. But basically, you'll have um, be able to receive a new ship with its stock equipment. You'll have to rebuy any modifications you made to it, but there's Alpha UEC in the game, and you'll be able to buy a lot of different things. Basically, no ships will just randomly despawn in front of you anymore, whether you're flying them, whether you've stolen them. So there will be reasons to steal stuff and then store them somewhere. We're going to be able to lock ships as well to help prevent theft in 3.0. There is a clear definition of both legal ownership and physical possession of items now, both of which persist. You're going to be able to request ships and deal with insurance on stations and some outposts moonside, which will also allow you to request ground vehicles if you have them from garages on the services too, so you don't need a ship to transfer transport them to the planet. The new air traffic control system will allow you to request a landing via comms calling, um, and this is like all the new rented texture stuff on the Moby Glass, but also in the comms calls, but also spawn and despawn your ship intelligently to safe places based on like, well, I'm going to land here, I park my ship, um, I request a landing. The ATC system will then, after a certain amount of time, despawn your ship um, and basically pretend that it's in like a hangar bay or something. Um, you are going to hear a lot about Item System 2.0. You probably already have a lot. It gets frequently talked about. In terms of gameplay, uh, it allows for a huge amount of customization and interaction with ships and weapons, but also the environment and NPCs. Everything is now being converted over to Item System 2.0, and everything that it will be created will be created with it in mind. So. 3.0 has basically standardized all objects, items, lifts, doors, weapons, ships, armor, pretty much everything. 
um, if for this 2.0 system. This allows for a nice robust system to add new items, to change existing ones, to edit them, um, to um, for more to communicate with each other. This also means we're getting a huge amount more functionality with our ships, with um, quantum fuel tanks, power plants, shields, uh, the way we interact with power, the way we interact with our signatures. Signatures will be a lot more important. Choices of equipment and weapons will matter. Um, and you're going to be able to purchase all of these systems and these weapons for your ships in-game with Alpha UEC in 3.0. Another part of this is the inner thought or new interaction system where you can now interact with individual buttons and switches in your cockpit, contextually interact with objects, pick up items, flip them, manipulate them and put them back down. You're going to be able to do quite complex tasks with those objects as well in the future. Uh, in some areas you can put them in your cargo bay as well and those items will persist there. You can find loot and pick it up, put it down, sell it, that sort of stuff. You'll earn Alpha UEC not just from selling cargo, uh, but also completing missions through the mission system. Missions are now going to be modular and varied. You're going to have a selection of missions available to you based on past ones you've completed, your reputation, uh, and where you've gone to go and get a mission from the jobs board or from a mission giver or whatever. A mission, for example, could be a simple go here and retrieve a crate. But this could be to one of hundreds of outposts on a planet or wreck or um, or wherever. You could get attacked on the way or on the way back. You might have to complete more than one task. Uh, there might be additions to the mission, little other outcomes. Um, other players might have a similar mission to try and prevent you to get that crate or to get that crate as well. Missions are going to be generated to get players interacting with each other and create adventure, tension and emergent gameplay. There are also going to be NPCs in 3.0 that give you missions like Miles Eckhart and Ruto. These are some of the first NPCs that we're going to have in the game that show off the interaction and subsumption systems that we can expect to see from the way that NPCs will interact with us. They'll pay attention to players, they'll say contextual wild lines as you pass them, they'll look at you appropriately while interacting with um, a drink or uh, working. That It will feel very much alive and immersive rather than forced or a part of a sequence. Landing zones and stations are going to feel much more alive with NPCs, more active and animated, moving around, doing various tasks. There are a lot of improvements to the look of space as well. They've made it visually pleasing and interesting. Asteroid belts might have huge amounts of dust, anomalies might be seen in the background, and they've got generally better VFX implemented. We're going to see the first iteration of engine trails for ships, but also planetary rotation and orbits are going to be in 3.0, allowing for natural day-night cycles and potentially eclipses and crazy things like that to happen just naturally. But also, this is going to necessitate the need to use the star map from our Moby Glass to get around the universe to choose quantum destinations as moons will orbit around Crusader. Gravity and atmosphere are also in 3.0. Though they don't have much variety in form of gravity, the moons will typically have less gravity, but atmospheric flight and entry is there and you can see the effects and ships will fly different in um, atmosphere than they do in space. The room system setup for pressure and oxygen is in as well, though in a limited fashion. Leaving an airlock now won't instantly kill you. You'll suffocate. Um, this will um, basically prevent people from glitching through walls with their suits on where they weren't killed because... In the old way they used to do it, there was basically a kill zone in the airlocks that if you used them while you didn't have a appropriate um, helmet on, that you'd just get killed by it. Uh, eventually, uh, we're going to see pressure and air composition and hazards to tra travel between rooms based on airlocks, um, as well as more aggressive depressurization. But for 3.0, it's going to be a non-faked system where if you go out into the um, into an area where there's no air or whatever, you will start to suffocate. That is the idea, but um, that will get much more evolved as we go on. Character customization will be in 3.0. We're going to have a limited ability to customize our faces with um, eyes, hair, basic feature changes, as well as hopefully gen there are going to be a huge range of armors and clothing to purchase in 3.0 as well. A much better shopping experience there. Armor can be bought and equipped piece by piece thanks to the uh, new item system 2.0 stuff. Along with that shopping experience and overhauled UIs, the Moby Glass has had a huge overhaul as well with its uh, rendered to texture use. But it's also going to get a lot more functionality now. It tracks quests, um, it finances, your status, inventory, ship information. It's used for a lot of 
stuff, customization of your ships and uh, insurance claims, lots of different stuff, but also, very importantly, the star map, which you're going to be using to select quantum travel destinations. This map should also allow you to scroll all the way down moonside and let you see terrain and points of interest that you've discovered in approximate area as well. There are a host of networking improvements in 3.0 as well as improved servers and services. Amazon Web Services allows for a much more scalable platform and wider coverage of their servers too. The amount of players in each server for 3.0 is still being worked out. This is likely to be finalized in a PTU build just before live because they want to get as many as they can in. Expect around 24 to 32 would be my expectation, um, but do not quote me on that. And uh, more will be coming as they improve and tweak. Performance in general should potentially be a lot better and when it comes to frame rates there are improvements and optimizations to the way they handle physics and for the flight model, entities and items but true optimization for the game will come closer to release though improvements will constantly be made and with stuff like network improvements and actual performance we do not know until it's literally in our hands. Shopping, persistence, trading and cargo and reasons to buy things with Alpha UEC seeing game and to earn it has effectively introduced piracy, bounty hunting, escorting and similar roles into the game as well because players will want to fight each other to try and steal their stuff, steal their ships, you want to get bounty hunters to try and hunt down pirates, you'll want to get escorts if you're running cargo regularly in larger ships. That with missions and the exploration of moons and Delamar will potentially allow for hundreds of hours of gameplay in 3.0. There's also going to be a hints and almost tutorial in game now that will help guide players um, with 3.0 features as they play. It will come up with hints and uh, stuff as you interact with things. Um, we're also going to be able to change our FOV, our field of view, and customise our multifunction displays on our ships, um, customise our ships and vehicles and that sort of stuff via our Moby Glass as well. Stamina is in. This is a massive change. Um, Based on our loadout and situation, our speed, agility, aim, jump, and movement will all be affected. No more running and gunning, unless you are an extremely light loadout with very little gear. And in that case, you're going to be able to potentially be killed very easily um, if you don't have the armor, or you might not have the right equipment for situations. But you will be able to run fast if you're just running around with a pistol and a, and a flight suit. Turrets have had a lot of improvement gameplay-wise, and hopefully they're going to be a lot better to use in 3.0. So, items and ships-wise, it is confirmed that we're going to have the Dragonfly, Nox Aura rework, the Gladius rework, the Cutlass Black rework, the um, Urza Rover in there as well, the Constellation Aquila, and the Prospector. We're also going to see reworks of all the FPS legacy weapons, um, plus the shoulder mounted railgun is going to be in for taking out ground vehicles and potentially taking out some ships as well. And the P8 um, ballistic submachine guns also going to be in there. We're going to have heavy armor, we're going to have explorer suits, we're going to have new clothing, we're going to have lots of new ship equipment uh, and items as well. Uh, and that's just basically what's confirmed. We might see a lot more ship equipment. We might see a load more items um, and FPS gear as well, potentially. Alpha 3.0 has faced delays and blockers. The schedule report each week shows the internal plans and target dates that CIG have at the time. We will, however, be getting a more in-depth schedule report each Friday, detailing blockers, progress, bug fixes, as well as an ATV segment focusing on getting 3.0 ready for release. As it is literally on the final straight to being released and they are just doing bug fixing and blocker removal and polishing. All these features that we've discussed will be evolving and improving vastly in the future and none of them are in their final forms. They are all, however, being built upon now. They're now there as the foundation and they can be built upon much more rapidly than before with 3.0 and that's whole system being done in object containers and item system 2.0 and all those other systems now in place. If you want to play with your friends, for example, as well now, it should be as simple as forming a part with them, jumping into the persistent universe or jumping onto their server if they're already in a game. Um, so stuff should be getting easier to do as well. We should see an update to the website with accurate stats and information around 3.0's release as well. Uh, mechanics like mining will be in the future. They're going to be the next major mechanic, specifically mining is um, after 3.0. But with Gamescom coming and the Delta Patcher, expect some changes to the way they're going to do the schedules going forward. Every month we have a giveaway for August. It's a Nox Q. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my Star Citizen videos during the month. Do you have any questions about Alpha 3.0, about Star Citizen's development in general, or anything we discussed today? A special thank you to my patrons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. If 
you're interested in becoming one of them, find the link to Patreon below, as well as everything else we've discussed. This is part of a series, this video this week, we're going to be looking at the change of scope of Star Citizen in general at release uh, and that sort of stuff as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I will see you in the verse.